If your tool tags have not come pre-programmed, then you'll have ordered the tool tag programmer PDA. We'll now go through the process of programming the tool tags, which starts at a computer and we prepare your tool list into a spreadsheet. This part of the process involves introducing your tool list into a spreadsheet. You must download the Excel templates from reacttech.com where you'll also find instructions on the whole PDA programming process. For the purpose of this demonstration, we've downloaded these files and put them in a folder on our desktop which we've called Tool Tag Form. Within the Tool Tag Form folder, we have a template which will now populate with tools. We can open this template and see the form itself, indicating the column headings for Tool ID, the dose, the dose source, and finally the tool description. To add a tool to this list, we'll just scroll down and first of all enter the asset number in the tool ID field. In this instance, I'll just put in number 312. The dose, which means vibration magnitude of the tool, by way of example, we're going to enter 5.6. And the dose source, which essentially is where your vibration data has come from, is indicated by a numbered system. Number one indicates that the data has been measured in-house. Number two is data taken from the manufacturer. Number three is data sourced from the OPERC database. Number four is data sourced from the INVC database. And five is other forms. Again, purely for example, we'll put in number five. The last field is for the tool description, which can be no more than 23 characters. These characters include letters, numbers, and some, but not all, special characters. For the example here, I'll enter Bosch, 5 inch grinder. Once you've entered in all your own tool data, we need to enable macros in this spreadsheet. If they're disabled, nothing will happen when the validate and generate tag data buttons are clicked. To do this, we'll scroll to the top of the spreadsheet where we'll find a security warning. If we select the options, we'll be presented with this screen. We'll now select the enable this content and press OK. Then we can now go and select Validate. This will now tell us if there's any missing data or if we have exceeded our character limit or have used special characters which are not permitted. If the Validate function flags no issues, we can then proceed to generate tag data. You'll be presented with a Save As window. The file will be saved into a CSV format. Check that this file format is selected as shown here. We'll now follow the prompt to enter a name for the output file. Before proceeding, it's a good idea to create a folder to save these files into. So we'll call this folder, for instance, Tool Tag Data Files. And for this demonstration, we'll save the file as Tool Tag Data. Save this and you'll be instructed that the file is saved successfully. We can then click OK and close down the template. Now it's time to connect the PDA using the USB cable provided. The sync application we use is Microsoft ActiveSync. This can be easily obtained from the Microsoft website free of charge. Just look for Microsoft ActiveSync 4.5. While Microsoft ActiveSync establishes a connection with our PDA, a pocket PC sync wizard will usually launch automatically. But we don't want to use this, so we can ignore this by clicking Cancel. The device is now connected, and we can hide this window. So now we need to retrieve the form we previously created in order to put it onto the PDA. So we navigate to the relevant folder, and locate the file we want to transfer to the PDA. In order to open up the PDA, go to your Start menu, click on My Computer, and you'll see in this window the icon for the mobile device. Double-clicking on this will open up its contents, and I'm now going to minimize this window, and select the other window, displaying the contents of our Tool Tag Data Files folder. And there's the data file that we want. And it's a very simple case of selecting, dragging, 
and dropping into the mobile device window. Simple as that, our file has been transferred onto the PDA. If you're unable to install ActiveSync on your computer, please consult the Tooltag programming guide available in PDF format on the React Tech website. This details an alternative method of file transfer using an SD card. Next we come to the process of actually programming the tool tags using the PDA. So now we've imported your tool list onto the handheld PDA, we can now select a tool for programming. Select the RFID application from the start menu and just give that a few seconds to load up. We then click on the input file button and select the file we recently created. We need to create an output file which saves the information of all the tools that you've programmed up. And we'll give that a name and for the purpose of this demonstration we'll just call this file demo and save that file. Now we can go straight onto the tag programming. So we click the tag programming button here and it brings us up a list of the tools from the tool list we created earlier. You then scroll down to the appropriate tool we want to program and we get the option to write the tag now. So we hold this to the side of the tool tag ensuring a good connection and click the write button. We now get an alert saying that the tag is written and confirmed and then we just OK this. You can then go through the rest of your list and program up the tools as necessary. We'll now take a look at the tool tag reading mode, which is a function that can be accessed by the reading mode button. In order to read a tag, we do as we did before for programming, by placing the reader at the side of the tool tag and pressing the read button. If there's not a good connection between the programmer and the tag, then try reorientating it around the other side before pressing read. There may be an error message that comes up saying no tag in range. Just make sure there's a good connection before pressing read. A message will then come up saying the tag has been read. We can OK this and view the tool's description.